Hello, my name is Michael Hoyt. This lecture is called The Beginning of the Cold War from the Perspective of the United States and the Soviet Union. It would be suited for an undergraduate course with a focus on the Cold War or a 20th century history of the United States course, as it refers to the United States interaction at the beginning of the Cold War. When discussing the Cold War, the first idea that comes to mind of individuals is a rivalry between the United States and the Soviet Union. From this base point, the narrative of the Cold War is drawn from this rivalry between these two great powers. The Cold War was shaped by the United States and the Soviet Union's competition to control the global narrative. Both camps built alliances in an effort to win the propaganda war to shift global opinion in their favor. In the recently established United Nations provided a platform for both the United States and the Soviet Union to argue for which worldview is best and for which set of ideas the world should pursue in their pursuit of a global narrative. States in the Soviet Union. It was not a foregone conclusion. Although the United States had a distinct distrust of communism and the Soviet Union, the United States had proven its willingness to work with the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, when needed. First by sending aid to the Soviet Union during the Ukrainian famine in 1932, and then by supplying and arming the Red Army during the German invasion during the Second World War. In both cases, the United States and the Soviet Union had shown a willingness to work together and collaborate when needed. As a result of these previous collaboration, collaborations, the concept of the United States and the Soviet Union working together to build a world safer for both worldviews after the Second World War does not seem unreasonable until you factor in a nation that, although only a limited factor in, defeat, in the defeat of the Nazi Germany, was the loudest in proclaiming their achievements during the Second World War. The British Empire and Winston Churchill proved to be the decisive factor dividing the Soviet Union and the United States, preventing both from collaborating and finding ways to negotiate and work together on solving post-World War II problems. The reason for the British Empire's efforts to prevent the United States and the Soviet Union from collaborating is Winston Churchill's desire to protect the British Empire and help to guarantee a position for themselves in the post-World War II world. Winston Churchill saw the big picture of a post-World War II world, one in which the British Empire would play a more diminished role in global affairs. As a result of this, Winston Churchill actively tried to prevent the United States and the Soviet Union from collaborating and opening a second front in Western Europe and to distract the United States from pursuing their war in the Pacific against the Japanese Empire. Winston Churchill opted for, instead that the North African campaign should be the focus of American efforts in an effort to protect British interests in Egypt and oil in the Middle East. And then once the North African campaign was wrapped up, Winston Churchill once again prevented the United States from opening a second front in France or in then Western Europe, and instead advocated a Italian invasion through the soft underbelly of Europe. An invasion of Italy would help further protect the, uh, British interest in the Mediterranean, help protect the Suez Canal, from the fascist Italian forces and German forces in the area. Even when North Africa was claimed and defeated and occupied by Allied forces, and Italy was defeated in the war, the British Empire and Winston Churchill advocated for a more direct route into Germany that would go through Yugoslavia and help basically defend British interest in the Mediterranean, while at the same time pushing the Soviet Union further away from their interests and keep them out of the Mediterranean. While the United States and the Soviet Union were still advocating for a Western Front in France that would divide the forces and force Germany to choose between an Eastern Front or a Western Front, the British em Empire actively worked to prevent this collaboration between the United States and the Soviet Union during this time period. Instead, the British Empire, Winston Churchill, wished to use the resources of the United States to defend the British Empire. The reason for this was the British Empire and Winston Churchill saw the long game of the war and wanted to put the British Empire in a strategic place to protect their own interests from the advancing Soviet Union, because the future of Europe would be one defined by the Soviet Union's role in Europe. If the Soviet Union had liberated all of Europe on its own, they obviously the Soviet Union would want to dictate the terms of peace within Europe and work to protect their interests and prevent a future invasion from a German state. Whereas the Soviet sphere of influence would interfere with the British. As a result, Winston Churchill, worked actively to prevent the United States from opening a second front and establishing it well before British interests were protected. 
Winston Churchill's meddling confirmed Joseph Stalin's suspicions that the Allies' long-term goals was a war with the Soviet Union, not necessarily with Germany. And in an effort to prevent the United States from collaborating with the Soviet Union, since both the United States and the Soviet Union had put the most manpower and material effort into stopping the Nazi war machine, Winston Churchill traveled to the United States numerous times, promoting the idea that the Soviet Union was a true enemy. And the, the pinnacle of this was his Iron Curtain speech, which helped to reaffirm the United States' suspicion of the United States and its inherent distrust of communism. Winston Churchill's meddling in the affairs of the post-World War II world seemed to confirm the Soviet, the Soviet suspicion of the West. The Soviet goal was to prevent an invasion from the West yet again. Starting with Napoleon's invasion of the Russian Empire, the Russian experienced numerous invasions from the Western powers. The West always invaded Russia. Russia was not, Russia was not the one invading the West. So as a result, the world in which Joseph Stalin wanted to create was one in which the West could not invade the Soviet Union again, in which Russia would be protected from a Western invasion. Thus, he believed he had the right to build a buffer between him and the Western world, particularly Germany, which he viewed as the number one enemy, the number one problem for Russia. Whereas for the United States, the goal was to continue the economic growth they experienced during the Second World War. The Second World War had helped the United States move out of the, the Great Depression. And so the goal of the United States was to make sure there was not a return to a global depression. And so as a result, the goal was as quickly as possible for the U.S. to rehabilitate the economies of the world and sort of reestablish trade and keep the American factories cranking out goods and resources. And thus for the United States, although they did believe Germany was a problem, rehabilitating Germany and making it a, a member of the economic community was more of a priority for the U.S. than it was for the Soviet Union. This initially starts showing the cracks between the Soviet Union and the United States. The United States believed that, yes, Germany was wrong, but at the end of the day, money is money and is more important to get the world making money again than it was to punish Germany. Whereas the Soviet Union had been invaded for the second time within a short period, within a generation, and they believed that it was the job of the world to punish Germany, make Germany, Germany, make sure Germany knew that they were wrong and they would never rise up again, even if it meant wiping Germany off the face of the earth. And this initially this created distrust combined with Winston Churchill's like meddling and splitting the two powers. The Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin quickly began to believe that the West was not out for the same thing that the Soviet Union was. And so thus the Soviet Union must create a more active position in defending its interests because the West was actively undermining it. And if anything, trying to promote the reemergence and the regrowth of a German state, which could possibly threat, threaten the Soviet Union. Thus the German question became the main sticking point in the early post early Cold War era between the United States and the Soviet Union because of this difference of opinions of what a post-World War would look like. From the Soviet perspective, the war had been fought to destroy Germany and to punish them for their genocidal war, which they started and inflicted upon Europe and the world. But then the United States began the process of normalizing relationships with what would later become West Germany and refused to establish, and their refusal to establish of a neutral Germany out of fear and paranoia of a potential Soviet invasion. It appeared that post-World War Europe was not about a Soviet-American alliance to prevent a return of Germany, but a plan to work with the Nazis to destroy the Soviet Union. Out of this paranoia, the German question pushed the Soviet Union to solidify its hold over Eastern Europe and to use East Germany as a forward base to discourage aggression of the United States and what would later become NATO. While from the American perspective, the Soviet occupation of Eastern Europe and the denial of democratic elections reinforces Churchill's rhetoric about the Red Menace and the Iron Curtain descending upon Europe. For the United States, rehabilitating Western Germany as quickly as possible became a means of protecting um, Western Europe from the Soviet invasion and Soviet influence. And the same with protecting West Berlin. Although its existence, its existence made little sense that there would be a Western enclave within the Eastern Bloc, which was given to the Soviet Union, still the United States viewed this as an opportunity in which to protect the West from the increasing menace that is the Soviet Union and its ideological influence upon the West. For the United States, Germany would be a barrier in which the Soviet Union would have to fight through if it wished to invade Western Europe. So the United States' the goal was to rehabilitate Germany as quickly as possible, financially get it back on its feet, rearm it, and turn it into a fortress in which the Soviet Union would have to fight through, allowing NATO and the United States enough time to manage to muster its forces and cross the Atlantic and do what it needed to do to protect from the Soviet invasion. And thus to do this, the United States wanted to needed to create a collective security organization 
So thus NATO was created as a means of uniting Europe as a collective defense against the Soviet menace. Because up to this point, the Soviet Union's army was numerically superior, and as a result of the fighting of World War II, the Soviet Union had shown that its ability to produce large amounts of equipment and amass large quantities of manpower. And thus, since France and any of the Western nations had been destroyed as a result of the fighting, the United States found it very difficult to maintain a large army in Europe to protect it. And thus, it was needed a collective security agreement to perfect, protect, protect Western Europe from the potential of a Soviet invasion. While initially the goal for the Soviet Union was to punish and punish the Germans for their efforts and to keep Germany in a destroyed state in which they were not able to rearm or defend themselves. But the success of the United States working with West Germany and West Germany's ability to rehabilitate its economy and become a economic power once again, and the United States' willingness to rearm and station nuclear weapons in West Germany, the Soviet Union took a different approach with East Germany. East Germany would become the, the Soviet Union's forward base in which to protect from a forward at, attack from the West. If the West was to invade Russia, they would have to go through East Germany. And the goal of East Germany was to break a NATO invasion. So essentially, the German question was became both NATO and the United States and the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact, turned Germany into a speed bump in which both armies would have to pass through if they wished to start a war with each other. Which, as you can see, the early parts of the war, neither really wanted to continue a, a war, neither thought that wanted to fight a war with the other, but uh, both as a result of Winston Churchill's meddling and basically the ideas that were placed in the, the heads of both the United States and the Soviet Union, both believed that the other was on the verge of invading the other within a moment's notice. And thus Germany would become that bulwark in which protected both from an invasion from the other. The German question became the avenue in which the early Cold War initially played out. The result of Germany's outsized importance to both the United States and the Soviet Union helped Konrad Adenauer, the West German Chancellor, and Walter Ulbricht, the first secretary of, of the Socialist Party of East Germany, um, became their avenues to help, you, help to rebuild and reestablish Germany as a regional power and reposition themselves within global politics. Within this competition between the East and West Germany, the emergence of a prosperous West Germany turned the German question into a volatile situation, one in which the slightest provocation could pro push the United States and the Soviet Union towards war. Thus, it was the Berlin Wall which ultimately solved the situation. Although it was not the best solution to the situation, it was one in which kind of calmed the situation down and solidified the fact that there would be an East and there would be a West Germany. This less than eloquent solution to the German question allowed the United States and the Soviet Union to move on to other priorities. For the German question had dominated the Soviet and American thinking up to that point. Each worried that one wrong move anywhere in the world would lead to an invasion through Germany. Thus, the re resolution of the German question allowed the United States and to the Soviet Union to move past the initial stages of the Cold War into the more complicated areas of global competition. The results of the early competition and the actions of Winston Churchill at the end of World War II caused the United States and Soviet Union to view each other as armed camps waiting to invade the other at any moment. So instead of the United Nations be, being the system in which the United States and the Soviet Union and the Allies envisioned as a place in which people get together, discuss ideas, and debate which world view would work best, and through diplomacy and diplomatic actions, the United States and Soviet Union can compete for the nations of the world. The Cold War was defined by the development of weapons of mass destruction and the threat of nucle nuclear war and the use of proxies around the world to try to gain edge militarily over the other. So that's the early stages of the Cold War was defined by the German question and the German question helped define the Cold War in the context of conflict and military aggression, not within diplomacy ideology and the conflict between two different systems of capitalism versus communism. It was more about the two sides not understanding each other, not being able to communicate with each other. And then as this lecture put forward, the initial reason for that was the disinformation, the misinformation persuade, put forth by the old traditional powers, such as the British Empire led by Winston Churchill, which kind of created a rift between these two groups and led to this initial distrust, because both groups initially did not necessarily trust each other. But in a world where they both had collaborated and worked together for the defeat of Nazi Germany, ultimately for the benefit of Europe. 
The Cold War could have played out as a situation in which the United States and the Soviet Union essentially dictated the terms for the rest of the world, in which since this, this does not happen. Ultimately, the Cold War was one of the early stages were initially about the misunderstanding between the United States and the Soviet Union. And that was the perspective which we're coming at here. The Cold War was not a foregone conclusion. It was a situation in which both sides were not able to communicate with each other. They didn't know the language in which to speak to each other in a way in which they could work together. 